Man, there we go. And welcome, oh, well, everyone. Yeah, yeah. Hey, welcome. This it's is the Ramble pre- different, different, different intro. We don't come in We're with used the energy. to the radio. We don't come in with the high, uh, no, the big no. dick energy. No, not that big <laughs> dick energy that everyone's so used to. Um, <laughs> we, uh, first of all, well, no, they're going to hear this later. But you're going to hear it again yesterday, the day before yesterday. Yes. But Jesus Christ, I, the Chadwick Boseman thing, brutal. That is just yeah. fucking brutal. That is, uh, and Sucks. the balls on people. What are they going to do about Black Panther? Will you fucking that? That's who gives a fuck who about what they're right going to do? God damn it! Oh, anyway, hey, that we'll was talk about that later or before. Before, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, man, it's appropriate so. for this movie to talk about something going back in time. That right? is very true. So this is Good Willow Hunting episode three. Yeah, we did it, and. Cody has an idea that we just milk this forever. I don't know if it's because he likes the idea of the show or he just doesn't <laughs> he just want to watch Willow. Podcast. Yeah, he doesn't want to watch <laughs> Willow. But I think he's just avoiding so Willow. It's a little bit of both. There's so much incentive to keep it going yes. as opposed to ending it. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, yeah. But we could keep it going even after Cody sees Willow. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. No. I know we li- we would have lied to everyone. We said we were going to stop at Willow. But yeah, yeah. Would. I mean, you would ruin the premise of the show. We would. <laughs> but <laughs> it's not like we'd destroy the trust in the Ramblers anyway. Exactly. We've already that was broken that a long time. Oh, yes. exactly. they, they are just, yeah. They don't care. Eddie said fuck them <laughs> like 30, <laughs> a month, two months Someone ago. Someone said fuck the Ramblers. I don't know if that was really me. <laughs> that could have been somebody oh, else. Oh, man. And we're here today to talk a movie that Cody just saw. For the first time, what, a, like a few days ago? Yeah, less than a week ago. Less than a week and it's, ago. it's uh, kind of apropos with the uh, the third installment of the franchise. Which is out now. Franchise just came out Just this past came Friday. out. Uh, and we are talking Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Mm. Here we go. Uh, man, so Cody, let's get mm. into this. Cody just saw this for the first time. Um, I can imagine. I'm just gonna say this. I bet the movie feels dated as fuck. If you're <laughs> well, watching it for the first I, time, I actually showed it to Colton probably like three or four months ago. For okay, I mean, yep. I hadn't seen it in a long time. Right, right. And it looks dated, as like the <laughs> the special effects. Are oh yeah, real bad. Uh, a lot of the jokes. I mean, there's a, <laughs> there's the. The joke in there when they hug. And they oh, like, that's bad. They, I mean, yeah. thank God that was left out of the newest installment. Yes, thank <laughs> God they ditched that because that running gag is in Bogus yes, Journey too. Yes, and it it's, is. Uh, it's so it's Tom Brenneman's favorite movie then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that part. I call. But can we just rewind this again one more time? <laughs> oh, good. I look, this is not who I am. <laughs> yeah, that is. but yes, it does. It does look dated, and I think a lot of the reference are, references are dated. Yeah, it's. Uh, it is even even well. We'll talk about Bogus Journey later, but there's some definite dated musical references there's in dated Bogus Journey. A lot of the <laughs> jokes are dated. Yeah, it's, it's really I think a movie for people that grew up in that time period. Yes, and and uh, but I I saw it again, and I I was like I remember I laughed at all the parts I laughed at as a kid. Yeah. right, like Iron Maiden, Iron Maiden, <laughs> yeah, and then Bogus, and then just I also love how dumb it is, like. The fact that you're supposed to believe that Ted somehow flew out of his armor as it was tumbling down the steps. Like, he just <laughs> somehow. And then I just love all, like, I don't know why, but I, this is something I laughed at seeing it now, was Socrates and Billy the Kid <laughs> throwing a football back oh, and when forth. They're in the, when, when they're all in the mall. Yeah, oh, the mall is, that scene kills it. Like, when, I mean, Genghis Khan going nuts in the sporting Was, was it Socrates and... Billy the Kid and Sigrun Freud are trying trying to fuck teenagers. They're trying to pick up chicks at the food court. (laughs) And then did you notice the... The <laughs> Sigmund Freud always has a phallic symbol on him. He walks out with a cigar, and then at the mall, he's got the corn the dog. dog. Like, it was just like that part. I thought was seeing one of the Go Go's as Joan yeah. of Arc. Tremendous. Um, there was a, there was a lot that still held up, and because well, just the because, whole final uh, assembly thing held up. Yeah, it, with it, Abe Lincoln coming yes. out and talking. Bernie, and look, anything with the great Bernie Casey in it, I'm yeah. in. But here's the thing. I what I the reason I think it held up, the parts that held up held up is because this movie is it's a cartoon. Yeah. It just if you just if you could just imagine Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck all it is. going on a time like that's what and this just movie bringing is bringing historical figures right. into it, the present day. Just try to suspend disbelief on the mechanics of time travel. 
yeah. Oh, you know, yeah, that's all gone. That's all out there. And the, you have fucking Napoleon eating an ice cream that, that Napoleon steals a movie. Cutting the line. Yeah, cutting, cutting the, line. the line at the wa- at Waterloo was the funniest part. Just him knocking kids out of the way and running back up the slide. Killed me. So, Cody. What did you think? What did you think? Well, I, I think the, the first thing that uh, that jumped out at me that I wasn't aware of uh, was that the first frame of the movie is George Carlin. Yes. And I was like, oh, my God, I did not know that he was in this movie. Um, so that was a pleasant surprise. He improvised that scene. Oh, that was all, And you could tell that's like a Carlin bit, you yeah. know, like uh, miniature golf scores are low. Bowling scores are high. You know, like that's <laughs> such a Carlin thing. But yeah. 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 Um, I, I think that the... Uh, the the thing that I thought, which will probably factor into, so because I've I've seen all three at this point. Right, I've seen right. I've seen the first two and then Bill Ted Face the Music. Cody, you can yeah. teach a class on this movie. On <laughs> these movies. And the the first thing I thought is that I don't I don't have any interest in seeing these characters as fifty year old men, <laughs> and I think that that it's a problem in that I think that these movies will only work if they are like young and dumb because I think the second that they age out of like dumb high school students, uh, it becomes a problem. I think <laughs> then you think bit. like they, maybe they just have some severe mental health issues that aren't <laughs> right. being talked about right now. But, but really what it, what I, what it boiled down to was I was like, okay, so this is like a live action Beavis and Butthead, yep. like a really, yep. like yeah. a really tame Beavis and Butthead before yep. Beavis and Butthead yeah. before Beavis and Butthead. Like it's a prototype of yeah, Beavis and Butthead. Basically. Yeah. Uh, and so I love Beavis and Butthead. Was not a super big fan of this. I think that it's fine. I think that that a lot of the really funny stuff for me comes from at like the stupidity of the characters yes. Yes. and like making like like showing how dumb they are. Um, and I think that they're both pretty good in the role. Yeah. Um, especially and it's funny seeing Keanu Reeves acting like that, especially knowing that. That became his, a parody of his career almost. Like, it, yeah. he was known as just the, whoa. Well, they even did whoa in Matrix. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like that sort would, of like an right, homage uh, to get to... A pop. I can't believe they didn't do whoa in Dracula. They should have had one scene where he sees the vampires. Whoa. whoa. <laughs> like, I don't know why <laughs> they didn't do that. But, yeah, like, yeah. That... But yeah, I, I like that. I like the, the um, I feel like the idea that they want to be uh, in a band, but they're very bad at instruments is a very, like, high school thing. Yeah. That, oh, that, every that, middle schooler. That, <laughs> yeah. I was in a band called, I think, Hellfire or something like that. <laughs> and none of us played music, but we designed the logo. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Shit, yeah One guy man. played bass. That was the only guy that had any musical. <laughs> we, I was in a band in high school. Of course you were. And uh, I, I could play bass. uh my friend Ben could play guitar. My friend Joey was an amazing drummer, but our friend Albert was the lead guitarist. And in high school, he was like doing Eddie Van Halen, Steve Vai runs. Yeah. So we're like, just go fly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you go spread those wings and you know go make, go make a living. You're killing head. the band. Yeah, you go make a living. Guitar solo. Yeah, you go make a living as a musician. And you then he ended fly. up in the fabulous Thunderbirds. Yeah, he did. <laughs> <laughs> He's a, like it was. He could play behind his back and solo and all that what shit. What he found insane. out he was in a cover band of the Fabulous. <laughs> <laughs> what a waste of his time. <laughs> but yeah, like it was. Uh, it, um, it's yeah. So I kept wondering when I'm watching it, going like, I wonder how these jokes are going to hold I up just, to like, anyone seeing it now. Like, yeah. I think you'd have a different appreciation for it if you were from our time. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. For sure. And, and as I look back on it, it's just a whole lot of low-hanging fruit. Yes. And I think that's kind of the, the problem with it is that I, I think that if you if you grew up with it, I could see how it could be, like you said, like an actual cartoon. Yeah. Like, I mean, it's just these really dumb yes. uh, characters doing really dumb things with a very cartoonish storyline of gathering historical figures for, for a, a book report. A book or report. For, a, for a report. A, history. a history report. And then, and then when they start playing the time machine game at the end where they just start yes. breaking down all the rules they've set up they for said, like that, that would that because it, I mean, it really almost... Well, it's, after we finish this, i got to come back and put the keys <laughs> yeah. here. here. If it weren't a book. comedy, it falls apart oh, completely yeah. <laughs> if it wasn't a comedy with oh, yeah. like dad over here you know like, <laughs> and then they get the facts duck and then they duck down and the guy gets up like or when the tr- wild stallion's trash can falls on the right car. on the guy's head like it was just yeah like it, i mean it's absurd it is way absurd but like i th- but again what i love about what holds up is 
Napoleon. I think the Napoleon scenes more than all hold the, up. I think all the historical figures. All the yeah, it just the the way like, and of course the, the, the quoting Kansas to Socrates. You know, this is all we are is dust in the wind. Like, and, and he, Socrates, it's just and, then, in the wind. and then Socrates does the days of our lives. Like, you know, like it's just like there's so many. Again, it is very dated. A yeah. lot of the references like that, like. You know, it, it, my, my, if I show it to my godson, he'd have no idea what the fuck, like, Sans, or he would even know what Dust in the Wind is, probably. Well, it's going to get to the point soon where people are going to know what the fuck a mall was. Yeah, what's a mall? <laughs> so none of it's going to make sense. None of it's going to make sense. Like, it yeah. was, uh, and now one thing that was, I didn't, uh, I, like, I found out, too, that the two guys, I don't know if you remember this, but the two guys who go to Napoleon, Pizigli, Wiggly, that, yeah. those guys, they were the ones who wrote it. And Oh, really? And they're in, uh, they're part of the seance crew. In Bogus Journey. Okay. And they're the two demons that they bump into in part three. When okay. They're like, when they're like, oh, yeah, well, the robot just came by here. Those two guys, yeah, yeah. they're the ones who wrote the movie. One of them is the son of Richard Matheson, who wrote I Am Legend and all those Twilight Zone really? episodes. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> and they did this in L.A. It was just an impro- like a sketch duo they had where they would go be Bill and Ted. And it would they created these characters, and apparently they've been doing it since like the early '80s. So like, yeah, it's really interesting. But uh, yeah, wow. it's, it's yeah, like, and of course, um, the van in part two yeah. was gonna be in part one, but because of Back to the Future, they're like, well, we can't have them time travel in a car. Right. We can't have a teenager who's in a band. <laughs> you know, we can't have two teenagers in a band like Marty McFly, who's a teenager right. in a band time travel in a, in, a, in a. So they they had to. It's interesting all the shit that went on behind how they made that movie yeah. um well it's also interesting that the, they used the phone booth to time travel the phone booth and you now there's no there's that's completely gone. that you can, there's Ar- no such thing no, as a phone booth you never would have thought that right in 1989 when it came out right that these would never exist that this in, would never exist that they have a maybe 15 years left to go and that's it and like and that's the other thing too is like uh one of the funniest lines of the movie was was it something like there's some serious shit going down at the Circle K? Yeah. There's no Circle K's anymore. Hardly. Like, right. You know like, what's so- you know what's funny is that Circle K's have started popping up in San Antonio a lot. Oh recently. really? There's a couple. Yeah. There's a couple. Not in L.A. Still, right. A, but they're they're uh, still around. Basically, basically Valero stations like v- Valero yep. like convenience stores turned into Circle K. Oh wow, there. interesting. Because the there was a Circle time K. when Circle K were almost all gone. Right, like there was, like they were, they weren't, you know. But it was well, they used to be standalone, like Seven Eleven. Yes, but now they yep. become now part the of gas, gas stations, stations and shit. Like it's, yeah. But it, yeah, I was trying to think of like the other things that, like, you know, just aren't gonna. Okay, one thing that I love too that I think still holds up is the jock giving his history report, and he's like, <laughs> just he was football. San Diego High School football rules. <laughs> he gets a giant pop. Or like how Missy like, has banged everybody in yes, town. Yes, Missy, including yeah. the history teacher. The look Bernie Casey gives her when she walks up to the podium. It, that's why I love Bernie Casey. So, he was so good. That look is like, oh, gosh, she fucked him, too. Oh, God damn like, that is so great. Fuck everybody. The look Bernie Casey gives Missy when that, she sits down. That running joke is a funny one. Oh, my they, they God. It, is, it was so great. Like, that was, I mean, shut up, Ted. <laughs> like, that's your mom, that's dude. Your mom. <laughs> shut up, Ted. And they're both trying to look down her dress skirt. Well, they her. both ask her to prom. Yeah, they both when she was in high school. <laughs> and then she, oh fuck, that was just that's your mom, dude. Was, <laughs> oh, you. And here he comes. Here and he comes. Ramble Corporate has now jumped fuck. in. They, they are on top of us now. Jesus, Jack, buddy, Bubby. All right, Papa. You know on. what started? Come on. Move, 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 move. down. This no, no, whole, no, no, this down. whole He's pro. Not, look at him. He doesn't care. This whole pro, pro Cody hashtag movement. Has yeah. Now, got, has brought, now Ramble Corporate just they hops gotta, in. They got to sit in on whenever they want. Now. These fucking assholes. This is typical Eddie to blame the fans for something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying He's they both sort saying. of happened at the same He's time. I'm just saying there's a causality there. <laughs> oh, another thing that I love, too, which is kind of sad watching the great Clarence Clemens from Springsteen's E Street Band yes. be the leader of the future. You know, that was kind of a bummer that he's no longer with us. That yeah. was that was. Uh, well, yeah, there's I a- was like, man, Claire, but I'm sure, like that was. Uh, but like, yeah, there's just so like there's so many funny gags. And it sits alone as its own movie. It didn't need Bogus Journey. No. 
to I mean it it wrapped up at the end. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. You would think okay, they did it. Well, the right. hands mute they they start jamming and yeah. George Collins like, "Well, they get better." They, yeah, 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 exactly. Like, that was like that, that was like, great. That's a great it, ending for that movie. That also, was a perfect ending for that movie. Perfect ending for that. And I also loved uh I also loved the little historical jokes like how Beethoven was deaf and he doesn't hear him like everyone else is like what's going on and he's just playing and they just pick him up and carry him away that's well as like shit goes that, wrong at the mall yeah that's like that was i thought that was really funny like just i mean yeah the billy the kid stuff all that was all that stuff was really good like yeah but yeah i mean i can't but again i get it like it's it is like you said it's a very tame version of beavis and butthead traveling through time yes. you know and it's like and yeah you just look back at some of the you know. and, I, and I and I wonder who the it, it made me really wonder about who this movie was geared towards yeah. because I believe the movie's PG and is, yeah. and also it's ta- it is tame I mean it is it is a, a mildly other than a few like you know adult related right. jokes it's pretty like mild. It's- for it, middle school kids, that's what. That's it, what yeah. I thought. I thought it was like that's when first, I saw it. That's, that's yeah. I was it, I was what six right right about to go into middle school when yeah. I saw like it was one of those movies where I think it was more geared towards kids who couldn't wait to go to high school. Yeah, that's what it felt I like. Think the I was target a freshman audience in high was. school when that came out, and I'm like, okay, like like it feels like uh like if like a like a middle school version of like John Hughes yeah type sure of stuff yeah in some way like it's but it's but like with the wholesome streak to it which I think is something that carries on and especially when you get to face the music yeah um, it's just yeah a, I was kind I was of kind of pleasantly franchise. surprised by the how they kind of kept that streak going by yeah. the third like but I will say we'll get into bogus journey next of course in the next episode we won't talk too much about that one but yeah like I um I just I was trying to think of some more shit that like um God damn, I'm blanking now. Of course, I just saw it the other night, but I'm just like, I just, it's got a, I just, the fact that there's, they go to prehistoric times just to put bubble gum on the, on the, on the time machine was weird. Well, they had, like, they had everybody chewing gum chewing to gum fix the antenna. To, yeah, to fix the antenna. Like, how did they explain to Socrates, don't swallow this? This is going to be Billy the Kid, even probably Lincoln. I don't know if any of them had, you know, Joan of Arc. Like, it just, but yeah, like, the other thing too is like it's also weird because you know that most of these characters have a tragic end. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, I mean Joan of Arc, Joan of Arc, Lincoln, <laughs> Billy the Kid. You know, like it's just Genghis Khan. Like you know, like yeah. and also the fact that like they, you see Genghis Khan about to rape a woman. <laughs> Like when they get him, oh yeah! Like they really were like, well, this is what he well, was. This is history. This is history. Like, well, you're was... also making some of the most vile characters in history likable. Likable, right? Genghis like, Khan, Napoleon, Napoleon. I mean, <laughs> and you're putting them side by side, no FOMO with Abraham Lincoln and Socrates, S- Sigmund Freud, and Sigmund Freud. <laughs> like, man, that was oh god, just yeah. The, 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 I was I was pleasantly surprised how the Napoleon stuff still held up. Like I was still well, genuinely a, laughing. That was just a funny. That was a right. great actor like, playing playing it completely <laughs> real. Like when he blocks the little girl and <laughs> getting the last bite of the ice cream. Like that was just like like the, as he did. Like it just you make an evil person funny by still yeah. being evil. And then they put the the badge on him because he ate it. Right? Yeah. You feel like that? They start singing to him. Like See that kind of that's the kind of stuff that that didn't work for me as a thirty one year old person seeing it for the first time watching napoleon I, I just, yeah i like like that kind of stuff was like the kitty kind of uh right like really tame humor that just like i was like this is not this was not designed for me right but right like when napoleon's at the top of the water side and he doesn't want to go he's afraid of it and right he just fucking shoves, shoves him, him and he, he gets out of the bottom he's like oh that was great I mean, come on cody when he's, completely flips. When he's running back up and he <laughs> elbows that little kid like he just knocks a kid out of line to go hop on the ride again i killed that kills me every time. I, I still love that scene. I still love yeah. The Napoleons I actually dug it. I was like, I thought, <laughs> but but then there's just like the uh, like what I don't I still don't understand like what turned his dad around. Like I thought he was all set for military school no matter what, but then well, now he wasn't. Like it, it, well, the whole thing was they had to they had to pass the thing. But yeah. then, but before they even got it on the time trial, I was like, nope, you're going. That's it. It's gonna happen. Like you are the plane. The you know, yeah. plane ticket is bought. Like that was, and it was uh, it was yeah, it was definitely like you. It was definitely for its time. Yeah, like you you know like um, it, and bogus journey is too. 
like oh i think bowie's journey is even more yeah for its time yeah than excellent adventure was yeah i think you're right like that was and they tend to do that with comedic sequels they always seem to do so many dated jokes in comedic yes sequels. it's very weird isn't it like yeah that's that's why like as much as i love airplane i don't know if i think some parts are always going to be funny yeah but so much of it is so dated yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I haven't felt this bad since the Anita Brad concert we went to. Like, who the fuck is going to get that rep? Most you know, of the like, physical gags are still funny. Like, when, yeah, when yeah, they're yeah. pulling Kareem Abdul-Jabbar out <laughs> He's of got, his Laker, he's got his Laker gear on. That's hilarious. The physical gags are always funny. Some of the, the written gags are dated. Are going to get dated. Yeah, like, that's... And I guess that's kind of the same thing here. Like, for us, the physical gags with Napoleon are still yeah. going to hold up. The stuff in the mall is still going to hold well, up. Anytime you you're know. taking, you know, like we said, historical figures and putting them in modern times, and then right? Because you still, even though times change, they're still fish out of water, yeah. right? Like they're still. Genghis Khan is like putting away his <laughs> his club for the, ba- the baseball the bat. Baseball yeah, bat. That puts on the football helmet, and he instantly knows how to ride a skateboard <laughs> like that. Was... <laughs> oh man! So, I, but yeah, I don't think Cody enjoyed it as much as we did. No. I would say I would I would have given this like like given the grading scale that we do yeah. on our show I would have given it a B minus which would have been recommended I would have yeah. but it's like the lowest recommended score you I, can but have. I could see that like that's a, yeah I could see this like for someone I think it's good enough to get a passing grade by someone who it wasn't made for yeah. but it but it no one is gonna love it unless they well grew if up anyone with watches it. this movie goes this is stupid I'm like of course it's stupid of course it's stupid everything right. about it is stupid everything you about can't this say is it's stupid as a reason you don't like it right. it is stupid it's stupid it is very stupid. either sit back and and veg out for right. an hour and a half and enjoy it or just don't watch it it's stupid regardless and I also like how there's an endless loop I guess of Ted. Not setting his watch, even though he reminds himself to. <laughs> he still, I like, I always thought that was funny how he never sets it. He, such a he watch, reminds dude. himself to do it and he still doesn't do it. Like, <laughs> I thought you that would was, think if yourself came from the future to tell you right, to set your watch, that would be the you first would, okay. Maybe I should do this right now. I should probably take care of this immediately, <laughs> but I didn't. But there we go. So that, that's not a bad one. There are good. So, Cody, you would recommend this movie, Bill and Ted's I Excellent would. Adventure. There we go. Yeah. Eddie and I would recommend it wholeheartedly. Oh, hell yeah. Hell yeah. Did Colton enjoy it? He did. He did. He oh, did. That's good. He that's really good. enjoyed it. Uh, I bet the Napoleon shit killed him. Oh, yeah. He's a big yeah. Napoleon fan. Right. So anytime <laughs> Napoleon shows up in a film, he's all over it. He's always happy to be. <laughs> I still can't get over Sigmund Freud trying to fuck. And Billy the Kid trying to fucking pick up chicks at a mall. Food court. Billy the Kid makes sense because he was like twenty. You know what I mean? Like he was like maybe seventeen or whatever. But Sigmund Freud. He's in his sixties <laughs> and he's trying to pick up fifteen. Ah, that was. <laughs> that part doesn't age as well. That does not age as well. <laughs> Still, that and the homosexual slurs. There's the slurs. It's like, do they really didn't need this? You look back, you're like, oh, I forgot that was like, oh god, I forgot about that's that. That's uncomfortable. Yeah, like that is like really. Yeah, like that's dumb. But oh well. Well, there we go. So that was episode three. Thank wow. you for tuning in of Goodwill Hunting. You know where to find us. We talk about this every episode. Yeah. Uh, join us next week as we talk Bill and Ted's bogus journey. There we go. My favorite of the two. Yeah, the original two. The original two. It's. God, it's tough. That's a tough one. That's a tough one for me. Really? Yeah, I well, have it be number one. I don't know. I don't I, I go back and forth. All right. I, we're gonna talk all about it all though. Right. What a tease! Such what a, tease. a way to tease this, <laughs> man! All right, we will see you next week. Goodwill Hunting episode four. Bye, Bye. everyone.